The protagonist of the show is Elliot Alderson, a socially awkward and depressed cybersecurity engineer from New York City. At first glance, his life is pretty boring. His daily routine consists of going to his workplace, a tech company called Allsafe, avoiding interaction with people and coming back home. However, when it becomes night, Elliot turns into one of the most interesting people on earth. Using his advanced cybersecurity skills, he has become some sort of a vigilante. No matter how secure or complex a data encryption is, Elliot will find a way to hack it. He doesn't do it for fun, he just wants to bring justice to those who need it. One day, he enters a coffee shop and sits next to the rich owner of the place, Rohit. At first, he has a normal conversation and talks about the impressive Wi-Fi installed there. However, a few minutes later, he changes his attitude and starts explaining why he's actually there. Elliot reveals that he hacked into Rohit's network and found out about his child pornography ring. There were hundreds and thousands of gut-wrenching videos, which Rohit apparently sells to his customers for money. Elliot also mentions that he has copied all the data and files, meaning that Rohit has no way of escaping. Hearing all this, Rohit becomes worried, but he claims that Elliot cannot inform the cops, as hacking into one's system is also a crime. To his dismay, the latter reveals that he actually contacted the police right before he entered the coffee shop via an untraceable number. This shows that Elliot always plans his moves in advance. Rohit, who at this point has become very scared, offers him money to reconsider, but Elliot straightforwardly rejects it, claiming he doesn't care about money. Soon, the cops arrive and arrest Rohit. The following day, we see how a socially awkward Elliot manages himself in the all-safe office. He tries avoiding just about everyone, including his boss, Gideon, and remains glued to his computer all the time. But there is one co-worker he loves talking to, Anjola. It's revealed that the two are childhood friends and have been very close for years. Elliot has a crush on her but can't express his feelings because she already has a boyfriend, Ali. After work, Elliot meets his therapist, Krista Gordon. We get to know that he meets her at least three times a week to help cure his depression. As expected, Elliot has hacked into her personal details and knows everything about her. For instance, she is currently dating a middle-aged guy named Michael. Elliot appears to care for Krista, so he tried to hack Michael's details and know him better, but even after hours of searching on the internet, he couldn't find anything. Meanwhile, as part of the counseling session, Krista asks him several questions, but Elliot, owing to his awkwardness, doesn't reply much. As a matter of fact, the therapy isn't helping him at all. At home, he usually has bouts of panic attacks, which makes him want to commit the unthinkable. And since he has no friends or family, the only way Elliot keeps himself sane is by ingesting high-strength morphine. Here, it is revealed that his father died of leukemia due to radiation exposure while his abusive mother left him at a very young age. The following day, as Elliot is busy with work at his office, some executives from a giant tech company, Evil Corp, arrive. Elliot despises the company because he believes that they are greedy money grabbers who don't care about their consumers at all. However, sadly for him, Evil Corp is currently funding his company, all safe. Just then, the vice president tech officer of Evil Corp, Tyrell approaches him and starts chatting over their shared interest in Linux. After work, Elliot returns home and carries out his routine of ingesting morphine. Shortly after, he is scrolling through his therapist, Krista's photos, when he learns that her boyfriend, Michael, has finally created his social media account. This gives him an idea. Early next morning, Elliot pretends to be a stranger and approaches Michael. He then borrows his phone on the pretext of calling his mother. He calls calls his own number to obtain Michael's phone number. After the work is done, he deletes the call history and returns the phone back. On his way home, he suddenly receives a call from his colleague, Angela, informing him that Evil Corp's server has been DDoS attacked. Deep down inside, Elliot is happy and wishes that more damage is done, but when Angela requests that he come over to help, he immediately obliges. On reaching the office, another co-worker briefs the situation. He reveals that the DDoS attack is the worst they have come across, and despite trying every single remedy, it won't go away. Wasting no time, Elliot checks into the system and learns that the attack is actually taking place from multiple locations. Moreover, it is not a DDoS attack but a rootkit that is causing mayhem. Now, the only way to get rid of it is by going offline and terminating all the viruses. Elliot's boss, Gideon, is skeptical about the idea as it may result in further damages to the system, but since there are no other solutions, he agrees to it. The next morning, Gideon and Elliot fly to their data center and begin the recovery. At first, Elliot redirects traffic to another server and then reboots the situation. The plan works and the servers are finally out of danger. Later, when Elliot is going through the encrypted 
files, he notices something strange. He finds a text file named Society that says leave me here. Elliot realizes that the file was meant to be found by him, so he decides against deleting it. Instead, he hides it inside Evil Corp's server so that only he can access it later. In the next scene, as Elliot is returning home via the subway, a strange man named Mr. Robot approaches him. He asks Elliot to exit the train and meet him outside for a chat, but only if he hasn't deleted the text file. Hearing this, Elliot realizes that Mr. Robot is from Society, the same organization that attacked Evil Corp's server. Hence, he quickly exits the train and follows the man. After a bit of small talk, Mr. Robot takes Elliot to their workplace in Coney Island, which apparently is a basement-like room with several computers. Unlike other hacking organizations, Mr. Robot reveals that here everyone has to meet physically and do things together. Later, after returning home, Elliot immediately logs onto his computer and tries finding more about Mr. Robot and society, but it appears as if they are ghosts. There is literally not a single information about them. The following day, an intrigued Elliot returns to Coney Island and chats with Mr. Robot. The latter reveals his plan to hack into giant servers, wipe out all the debts, and distribute wealth evenly among the population. In short, he wants to start a financial meltdown and bring down the disparity between the rich and the poor. Mr. Robot further reveals that he targeted Elliot because of his vast cyber hacking skills and also because he has access to Evil Corp. It turns out that Evil Corp owns a whopping 70% of the world's credit industry. Elliot is caught between two minds as he wants to help those in debt, but at the same time, he also believes that robbing the rich of their hard earned money is wrong. He mentions that he will think about it, but before departing, Mr. Robot assigns him a task. All he has to do is log into Evil Corp's server, modify the text, file from earlier, and enter the IP address of Terry Colby, the CTO of Evil Corp. That night, a confused Elliot changes the IP address and keeps the records in a file. However, he decides against submitting it to the authorities. He hates Terry Colby, but doesn't want him to go down this way. The next day at work, Elliot, his colleagues, the FBI, and the executives from Evil Corp are having a meeting about the cyber attack. Angela is doing her best to brief the situation, but the arrogant Colby ignores her and tells her to leave the meeting. This enrages Elliot, so he eventually decides to hand the file over to the FBI. After the incident, several days pass by, but the news of Colby's arrest has not appeared. Moreover, Mr. Robot and his society have become anonymous, prompting Elliot to believe that he was tricked. With nothing else to do, he decides to toy with Trisha's boyfriend, Michael. He calls him pretending to be his bank officer and extracts important details like his dog name, favorite things, and so on. Using the information, he easily hacks into Michael's account and learns that he is cheating on Trisha with several women, some of whom are underaged. That night, Elliot confronts Michael and reveals that he knows everything. He then blackmails him to come clean with Trisha or else he will inform the police. Left with no choice, Michael obliges and thus their relationship comes to an end. A few weeks later at work, the news of Evil Corp CTO Colby's arrest is finally shown. This makes Elliot realize that Mr. Robot and his vision are are actually trustworthy. Later, as he is walking down the busy street, a group of suited men force him into a car and take him away. Soon, they reach an office where several men are waiting for him. One of them is Evil Corp VP tech officer that he met earlier, Tyrell. It turns out that he has become the interim CTO of the company after Colby's arrest. Tyrell gets straight to the point and offers Elliot the position of head of cybersecurity at Evil Corp, which would make him a millionaire in months. However, after thinking for a while, Elliot politely declines, claiming that he is content with his current work. That night, he logs into his computer and tries hacking Tyrell's database. Surprisingly, the new CTO of Evil Group doesn't even use two-step authentication, and Elliot easily gets access to his emails. He scrolls through it, but finds nothing other than family pictures. This is when it strikes Elliot that Tyrell wanted him to hack his database all alone. Hence, he disconnects his computer, turns off the router, and burns the memory cards to stay anonymous. The next day at work, Gideon summons Elliot to his office and displays a recent video video released by the cyber hacking group Society. In the video, an anonymous person in a mask takes responsibility for the recent attack on Evil Corp and demands the release of Colby. He also threatens the major credit organizations to dissolve their assets and distribute it evenly among charity organizations. Failing to comply will result in these major organizations getting hacked. Seeing the video, Elliot once again assumes that he has been duped. Later, he returns home distraught, only to find someone in his shower. It is Darlene, one of the 
society hackers that he had met earlier. She has come to escort him to their hideout for the next mission. Elliot believes that he is going against the law and fears being caught, but suddenly he realizes that he can learn more about society and expose them once and for all. Hence, he agrees to go with Darlene. On reaching the place, Elliot meets all the team members and chats with Mr. Robot, who starts discussing the next phase of their plan. He orders Elliot to blow up a gas plant, which is next to an off-site evil corp data storage facility. This will erase all the data that is transferred to China, hence starting their uprising. Elliot is intrigued by the plan, but since it involves blowing up and killing people, he decides to stay out of it. However, in the subway, he realizes that he cannot run away from society, as he has also become one of them. All these incidents have started to take a toll on Elliot's psyche, so he decides to increase his morphine dosage. He goes to his neighbor slash drug dealer, Shayla's house, only to find a violent woman abuser and drug supplier named Fernando. Elliot appears to know everything about him as he is Shayla's only drug dealer who often visits her. He is the one who supplies the morphine that Elliot regularly consumes. This is also the reason why Elliot doesn't expose him to the police. If Fernando is gone, his morphine is also gone. Shortly after, Fernando leaves and Elliot finds Shayla half unconscious and beaten up. In the bathroom, he urges her to inform the police about the constant abuse she has been suffering, but Shayla refuses, saying Fernando provides her with very good deals. This infuriates Elliot so, he decides to take matters into his own hands. He anonymously leaks Fernando's details to the police and gets him arrested, even if it means that his regular morphine supply is now gone. Elsewhere, as Angela and her boyfriend, Ali are walking on the streets, a random guy approaches them and gives them a CD, saying it's his new mixtape. When they reach home, Ali inserts the CD into his computer, and as soon as he does so, he receives an email from one of his girlfriends. She invites him over to her place to have fun that night. Ali, being a pervert, lies to Angela that he has a meeting with his friends and departs. Surprisingly, after he leaves, we can see that a man named Cisco has hacked into his computer webcam. The following morning, Elliot meets up with Mr. Robot and the two sit on a railing and talk. They talk about their past lives and families, but in the midst of it, Mr. Robot expresses his displeasure on the fact that Elliot abandoned them some days ago. Saying this, he suddenly chucks Elliot from the railing and onto the rocky beach below. On the other hand, the interim CEO of Evil Corp Tyrell gives an inspiring speech to the CEO, explaining why his role should be made permanent. But to his dismay, the CEO reveals that they have found a good candidate whom they want to try out first. Hearing this, Tyrell becomes enraged and heads to an isolated location. There, he meets a homeless man, pays him some cash, and beats him to a pulp to vent out his frustration. Meanwhile, Elliot wakes up in a hospital, bruised and bandaged. He is visited by his therapist, Krista, who believes that he overdosed on morphine and fell from the railing. When Elliot declines, she asks him to provide her with a blood sample. This is music to Elliot's ears. Because the current hospital he is in has a very weak security system, it is run on Windows 98 and has a puny antivirus as protection. As a result, he easily hacks into it and alters his records to make it look like his blood is free of drugs. After getting discharged, Elliot heads to work the next day, where Mr. Robot pays him a surprise visit. The two then head to a bar and discuss, but Elliot is still angry about what happened earlier. He tells Mr. Robot that he doesn't want to be a part of his plan anymore anymore and asks to be left alone. Mr. Robot obliges and before leaving he reveals that society is going to be defunct as without Elliot there is no purpose in the plan. With the notorious cyber hacking group out of the way, a big burden is removed from Elliot's chest. Hence, he starts becoming more social and interactive. He asks his neighbor and close confidant Shayla out on a date and also engages in other normal activities like jogging, going out with friends, chatting with people on social media and so on. At night, Elliot, Shayla and the other all safe employees are invited to Gideon's house for dinner. There, they reminisce about their work and the good times they have had. Suddenly, on the television, a news channel reports that the notorious hacker group Society has struck again. This time, they have released huge amounts of data, which reveal that Evil Corp knew about the Washington toxic waste scandal, which killed several people due to leukemia, including Elliot's dad and Angela's mom. The news makes Elliot sad, but now he has a purpose to take down the company. Hence, he quickly leaves the place. Later, when Angela and Ali reach home, they get into a minor argument about their recent relationship status, which has been mostly cold. Taking this as the perfect opportunity, Ollie finally reveals that someone has hacked into his computer. The hacker, Cisco, has sent several nude pictures of Angela along with credit card details of her father and is threatening to release them. However, Ollie can stop that from happening if he infects their workplace. All safe. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the couple seriously considers doing it. In the final scene, Elliot, who has apparently made up his mind, arrives at the society base and joins his teammates. 